Well, we're standing here in front of the convection oven and realize we, we get asked a lot of questions about heat deflection properties for a lot of our resins. Now, we can supply you with, with the uh, spreadsheets if you want to see them, but we thought we'd do an experiment to kind of show a real world example of how these proper materials react to the heat. Yeah, like Brian says, one of the frequently asked questions we get is, hey, is this part going to melt on me uh, if I'm at elevated temperatures? And I guess the, the short answer to that is going to be no. Uh, stereolithography resins are thermal sets, which is an irreversibly curable process. So the part itself is not going to melt. It's different than a thermal plastic, like a typical injection molded part, where in those cases you can uh, melt something and shape it. You can melt it again and reshape it uh, into different things. So it's very recyclable. Thermal sets, uh, like stereolithography resins, are not. Um, so they can be recycled in the uh, terms of filler material. But once it's got its shape, <clears throat> it's got its shape. So um, again, we're going to do some experiments here today and see uh, how heat affects uh, the materials as we slowly ramp up temperatures. Well, basically what we have is a sample that represents each of the resins that we offer here at Realize. Uh, these are in order of heat deflection temperatures, so uh, they're marked and labeled in order of least resistant to most resistant, ending up with the SOMOS 18420, which is thermally post-cured. Okay, we're going to start our experiment here right around 100 degrees, and uh, we're going to leave this in here for a little while and see how 100 degrees affects uh, these parts here. Um, one of the things that we do discourage is uh, ground shipping, especially across the country in the middle of summer, uh, due to the effects of heat in the back of, say, a UPS or FedEx truck uh, or on a, 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 a not climate controlled dock. Um, so we thought this might be a good start. Okay, we've uh, had this first round of parts in here for about 20, 25 minutes or so. So we're going to open things up here and, and just kind of give everything a little squeeze and see how it, uh, how it feels. Again, this was right around, I believe, 100 degrees is what we were starting with. So um, at this point, everything is still feeling pretty good, um, about like the original. A 9420 is getting pretty soft. Uh, again, that's got one of the lower heat deflection temperatures on it. So that one's getting pretty easy to squeeze across the board there. Eighty-one twenty is feeling awful soft as well. Which makes sense because those are our two most flexible materials to begin with, so they've got uh, a lower heat deflection with the most flexibility. I also feel uh, Acura 25 and our uh, 3D printer material, the M3 Black, off of the Projet 3500 HD Max is still, this is the one non-stereolithography material that we've got in there, uh, although it is still a flash cured system. So yeah, um, right now I think all of our flexible materials are, we're starting to see some impact uh, as low as 100 degrees. Um, so we're gonna ramp up the temperature a little bit here. Okay, so the parts have been baking in here for several minutes at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, we expect to see the parts getting actually really flexible, really pliable, um, and really soft. So let's find out. You can see here that we're able to take most of the pieces here. Back here, 60 still got a little bit of resistance to it. But what I would, what I'm kind of experiencing here is the parts are feeling a little bit oily. Um, they don't feel like they're normal dry selves. But these are normally pretty stiff pieces here that we're able to totally make them touch with relative ease. Yeah, at room temperature these parts would actually break if we tried to uh, touch the parts together. Um, I think we're going to uh, jump up again here. We were at 130 so we might jump up to 150, 175 and uh, we'll get back to you. All right so the parts have been baking for approximately 30 minutes at about 175 degree Fahrenheit. I think what we're going to find is just really really soft parts so Okay, yeah, we definitely got some splatter going on here on the tray. Yeah, we're getting some discoloration too in the parts that we see. So yeah, this is uh, really turned into a rubbery like, wow. These but, um, are all, I mean, it doesn't take any effort at all 
to squeeze these together. I'm noticing the parts still have a little bit of memory to them though. They, they do bounce back. And we're starting to get a little softer on the 18-420, so we're, we're approaching some deformation. So what you can definitely see here, uh, under increased uh, temperature, any kind of load, you're going to see some deformation. Um, so that's the best thing to, to point out here. So I think we're going to give her one more run here at uh, over 200 degrees and see what we can do with the 18420. Um, so we'll be in touch. Okay, we are uh, back here at Realize at the, the confection oven. We're currently in the 220, 225 uh, range on temperature. So this is going to be our final stop um, on the tour today. So we're going to see where things are at. Uh, again, things have been in here for you know 20 minutes, half an hour, letting them come to temperature. And we're going to see more discoloration on the parts. And at this point, other than the parts being quite warm, we're really uh, able to tweak them and twist them into just about any shape we want. They're becoming very, very pliable, very rubbery. They've almost got a, um, a shore A feel to them uh, on the durometer scale. Um, all of the parts are quite flexible. Uh, even the 18420 has got a lot more flex. Um, of course, we have exceeded its um, heat deflection temperature as well. So at this stage, I think we've um, I think we've shown what elevated temperatures uh, can do to SLA parts. Yeah, and you know, for for a high heat application, we've definitely proven the worth of the of the thermal post cure option that's available only with the 18420. Everything else seemed to really break down around that 130 degree mark. So. You know, it's valuable for us as well as those engineers looking to find a, a solution for, you know, high heat applications. You know, most of these resins will probably hold up just fine under, you know, short blasts of heat above that 130 degree uh, temperature mark. As you can see, they all have sort of a memory. They're bouncing back into shape. But for long-term subjection to heat, definitely we recommend the uh, post-cured 18420 resin. I think the next step, uh, if we were to check with anything, is to see what would happen when the parts come back down to temperature, uh, down to room temperature and uh, see if they, um, I guess, regain their properties. Um, and in a sense, we've kind of taken them all through a thermal post cure at this point. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. But uh, uh, I think this has been a good uh, indication of, of how heat can uh, affect your parts. Of course, this is not under load, except when we've been squeezing the parts. So, um, you know, depending on your particular application, um, you know, any of these resins may work if there's load or no, no load, depending on a short burst of heat or a longer burst of heat. So. You know, feel free to call us with any further questions, uh, and we'd be happy to answer them. Okay, here we are uh, a day later. We were up to, uh, what, 225 degrees yesterday. We let uh, the parts come back down to room temperature overnight, and uh, it does appear that everything kind of went back to its original properties. Um, at least as far as uh, you know, flexibility goes, everything's back to where uh, it approximately was uh, originally before we started ramping things up. So... Um, other than the discoloration, um, and then you know we know for a fact that uh, I guess this process we took them through did heat tr treat them in some respect. So that what this proves is that uh, under load at elevated temperatures, the parts are going to move. Um, if, if brought back down to room temperature, uh, you're going to see uh, the original properties return. So um, with that said, you know short bursts of elevated temperature is probably not going to uh, affect um, your application too much, uh, depending on what you're doing with it. Uh, but elevated uh, temperatures for extended periods of time are obviously going to see some uh, uh, probably ill effects.